Well, good, good, good morning. We are continuing our series today. By the way, Ernie and the team, thank you guys, and Rodney and Brian, thank you guys so much. There are about nine people, I think, here total. It's very awkward when you're the pastor of nine people, but, uh, but there are nine people that I love and appreciate, and I want you to know I told all of them this morning Please don't do anything that you feel unsafe about. If you feel like God doesn't want you to come, we'll, we'll, work, we'll work it out. And um, the pastor will stand on the roof for, uh, for the drive-in service. We're going to do two drive-in services. We're going to do, uh, because if it's cooler, so we're going to do the Saturday night service on Easter weekend. Drive-in, no getting out, no touchy, no touchy. And we'll do uh, Sunday morning, uh, you got to have a sunrise service. So we'll do that and... And we're working out the details as far as sound and all that. By the way, I want to say hi to a few people this morning. Melody, I just saw that you said hi. And Cammy and Debbie and Linda. Uh, Brian Rice, you're right here and you're watching, which is really weird. I just want you to know. Uh, Ashley and Billy and, and Brian, there you are again. And uh, DJ uh, Beth. And I saw some other people. Amy Anthony. Oh, she loved the melody, by the way. I said, yes, the brothers are in the house. So... And the Zubowitz are watching, and Tracy Deacons, and uh, David Leslie is driving and hopefully not watching. He's just driving and listening, uh, and he is actually up north somewhere, and we've got families listening to all over the country, and I hope you're feeling well. I love that people are interacting online and greeting each other and saying good morning. You know, I want to encourage you. I'm going to say this again, okay? I cannot read minds. So if you have a need, if you have something you're like, gosh, I wish the church would help here, please let us know. There is no request that I won't listen to. We can't always do them all, but I love to hear what's going on. So we got a call from the Boys and Girls Club. I talked to the director here, Aaron, of the Boys and Girls Club. So we are collecting difficult to gather items, but even more difficult for families without means and sometimes without transportation. So we're collecting uh, hand sanitizer, which is like gold. Uh, by the way, I have a friend who has a child with autism that will be making hand sanitizer soon and will be able to buy it. So I will let you know that link soon. Also toilet paper and of course wipes uh, uh, to clean with. Those are the three items we're collecting and we're going to be doing that in the next few days and either Tuesday or Thursday this week. But if you have it to the office by Tuesday and just drop it off, you don't have to touch it. You can drop it off at the door, and Diane has been awesome about coming down here constantly and checking everything. All right, so today we're going to be talking about Colossians chapter 3, and here's what we're going to talk about. How I can put on the new me. How I can put on the new me, because here's what I know. You right now have something on. In, in Colossians 3.15, it talks about the peace of Christ ruling your heart. Paul uses two illustrations. He uses this idea of the peace of Christ, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but he also uses this idea of, um, of putting on, putting on his peace, of putting on Christ. And so I realize that sometimes we're kind of like this fishing jacket, and, uh, and we have all kinds of things in our pockets that we try uh, in life. Sometimes um, we don't have anything in our pocket which is what that happened with that. I have no idea where I put these things. All right, sometimes we, uh, you know, we, we just try to keep busy. You know, if we just do enough stuff, if we stay busy, then we feel okay. Just don't let your feelings sink in and you feel okay. That's one of the things that sometimes we put on is just that busyness. And I need lessons. I, I wish Ralph from First Baptist O'Galley was here to help me. Uh, sometimes, what do we do? We medicate. We medicate. Now, medication for some of us may be actual medication to help us to deal with life, but sometimes our medication is Netflix. Sometimes it's Tiger King. Is that what it's called, Tiger King? Uh, Lion of Tigers and Bears? Oh, my. Do you have any idea what I'm talking about? That's the number one series right now is about a guy who raises tigers or something, right? Isn't that, Brian, is that what it's called? And then, and then some of us, it has to do, we're hiding in our, this is a charger, we're hiding in our technology. We're looking for ways to escape. We're looking for entertainment. Or maybe we're paying way too much attention to the news. 
And right now, we are news junkie. Listen, you, once you learn everything you need to know to keep safe, can I give you a secret? Put it away. Put it away because what? As you put these things on, the world wants to tell you, you're going to be okay if you'll just do this. You're going to be okay if you'll just do this. You're going to be okay if you do this. And as soon as the initial excitement of, of having news and suddenly feeling in control, as soon as that initial control goes away, then we feel empty and we feel lonely. We start focusing on unforgiveness. We start focusing on frustration. And we can respond in ways we should respond to. Why? Because we've put on the wrong clothes. So I'm going to show you a little later in the service how we can put on the clothes we're supposed to. But first, I want to talk about this verse that we're going to get to. And I'm doing a lot of introduction today, so you'll just have to forgive me. But in Colossians 3.15, it says to allow the peace of Christ... To rule your heart. That word for rule means two things. It either means uh, uh, umpire, which a lot of us don't play baseball, but it can also mean director. So I want to show you a few directors that you may know. Uh, this first one, uh, this is Steven Spielberg. Steven Spielberg's made some really good movies. One of them, Ouch, oh, oh, ye deep on oh. Steven Spielberg, right? Uh, um, he also did uh, uh, just a lot of good movies. I'm not going to start naming the movies. All right. And then the second guy, Charlie Chaplin, you may have heard of him, but he actually directed The Kid. That was huge breakthrough in styles of movies. He was producing that. And then the third guy you may have heard of, Alfred Hitchcock, made terrifying movies. But then I want you to think about this picture of an old movie director. Here he sat up on his podium with his bullhorn, and he would yell, cut, or he would say, action, or he would tell them what they were supposed to do. Now I want you to do this scene with this. And in the silent movies, they actually could direct the whole time while the scene was going on because they couldn't hear him. Now here's what I want you to know. When we look in Scripture at Colossians chapter 3, what's beginning to happen in the Bible and what's beginning to happen in our minds and our hearts is he's saying, listen, be careful who you put in the director's chair of your life because all of us are directors and our thoughts are playing movies all the time. You are an amazing movie producer. This week at some point you had this movie, what if? What if this happens? Some of you had this movie, I can't believe so-and-so did that. I should go and tell them this. And you produce an entire movie about what you should have said. Or maybe you struggle with regret. So the producer in your life, which is you, makes a movie about how you should have done better or what a failure you are. And anytime you allow yourself to be in this director's chair of your life, you're going to struggle. And so Paul in Colossians chapter 3 is giving us basically a whole series of things of what happens when you sit here and how it leads to anger and it leads to lust and it leads to unforgiveness. But when you allow Jesus to be the director, how it leads to peace and allows the peace of Christ to rule your heart. So when you start going down the wrong road in your mind, he says, cut wait, stop seeing, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I have given you my peace. I am the great counselor. I love you. I care about you. So today we're going to look at this whole idea of is the peace of Christ ruling us or is something else? So we're going to start with number one. Number one, first we need to change your contemplation. Change your contemplation. What are you focused on? If you're the director of your life, you're going to be focused on the things that have to do with you. And so Paul starts in chapter 3, verse 1, like this. Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. Time out. I probably would not have to do any more sermon today if we would just practice those couple of sentences in Scripture, right? 
If we would just get our eyes off of all the earthly things we're concerned about, if we'd get our eyes off of all the, the relationships and the difficulties and the struggles, and we would say, God, I'm going to focus on you knowing that you will tell me, you're going to direct me in what to do next. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you'll appear with him in glory. And then he says this. You know, you got to watch out for these clothes. Here they are. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. When you begin to take control, when you become the director, even as a Christian, you can sneak up here and start to direct your own movie. Here's how it goes. He says, sexual immorality. By the way, this is word in the Greek is where we get the word Porn, Nia from, it's porn. He says, watch out for porn. This is thousands of years ago. Porn usage has gone up tremendously in the last couple of weeks. Why? Because people are looking to medicate themselves. They're looking for an out, something to help them get through, but it's not the answer. And he continues, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed. <laughs> did, did you know greed's not just about money? You can be greedy for toilet paper. Did you know that? Have you, have you realized that yet? There's greedy toilet paper hoarders in the world. That's why it was awesome to walk in this morning and already see that people have donated a table full of toilet paper for families who need it. I just love that already. And then it says, and greed, which is idolatry. Basically, you are wor wor worshiping something else. And then he says, because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, and, and you did things such as these. You had anger when you were directing your own movie. You had rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. And then he says, don't lie to each other. Since you've taken off your old self with its practices, and you've put on the new self, which is be re renewed in the knowledge, in the image of its creator. creator. Here... There is no Gentile or Jew, Chinaman or American. There is no Italian or Floridian. There is no Mimsite or Orlandoite. There is no Patriot fan or Dolphin fan in Christ. We even love Patriot fans. By the way, Ernie and his brother are big Patriot fans. That's what that's about, if you didn't know. So he says, we are not Gentile Jews, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian. I love barbarian. Isn't that an awesome word in the Bible? Barbarians. You're like, we're not barbarians. Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all in all. He says, hey, you're no longer identified by the jacket you wear. You're no longer identified by those things that you used to do. All those things that you had in every pocket trying to make life make sense. No longer is that your identity. You're not that person anymore that you used to be. But we have to choose what we think about. The first prayer I want you to say is, Father, help me to focus on your kingdom. When they first sent British missionaries to different countries and they would send them basically out of civilization to work in these communities in, in Africa and in India and they would get away from the norm, they would go to visit a year later and find that the missionaries had gone crazy. Many of them had quit being missionaries and started doing just whatever, in some cases becoming totally immoral. And so early missionary societies got together and said, what can we do to help with this? And so they told early missionaries that every day you need to have tea in the afternoon just like you would do at home. You need to set the table. You need to brew the tea. You need to get the tea bag out. You need to do everything you would do at home. And they found that by doing that, it rooted and founded and reminded those missionaries of who they really were and where home was. 
See, as Christians, if we're not careful, we walk around people who are in the world, who do all the worldly things, who are focused on fear, who are focused on being scared. We read the newspaper. We watch TV. We have all these fearful thoughts, these hateful thoughts, these frustrated thoughts, these racist thoughts, these things that are terrible with each other. And we begin, if we're not careful, to fall into that. But then it's time to have tea again. And when we take time to spend time in God's word, when we spend time in the Bible and read God's word every day, and we take time every day not only to pray, but to develop a mind of prayer where all during the day we pray. And we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit, just like the tea in the jungle would bring the missionaries back to, that's right, this isn't my home. I don't have to act like this. We're here to help people. By going back to God's word, we remember why we're here and what really matters and that we're God's children and he absolutely loves us. I want to encourage you, those of you who are home, and some of you may even feel trapped at home, I want to tell you something. This world is not our home. The Bible makes it very clear that our world is bigger than this. And my hope is during this time of uncertainty in our world that that hook towards heaven will be even stronger for you. That the crazier the world gets, the more you will seek the sanity and the peace that only comes from God. And how do you do that? Well, first, that first point, you have to change your contemplation. Number two, you have to care for and carry others. Care for, number two, care for and carry others. Here's what it says. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves. Wait, we have different clothes now. This is my wife's robe, by the way. I don't actually have a robe. I realized this morning I lost it. That's how often I wear it. I think this looks cute on me. Paul says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly love, clothe yourselves, listen to this, with compassion. This is a very different list. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Let me me go over that list again. Listen. Don't we need compassion in our world, caring for other people? How about kindness? Just being nice to somebody who needs somebody to be nice to them, to be kind to somebody who maybe doesn't deserve it today. How about humility? Everybody knows what they're talking about, don't they? Humility. Can we be humble and say, you know what? I don't think I know everything. By the way, in marriage, they say every fight has one cause. Pride. Now, the problem is, usually if you try to counsel somebody, they say, yes, it's their pride. (laughs) Humility, it helps us to consider other people. And then gentleness. And finally, patience, the one I like the least. And then it says this, bear with each other. Now, let me tell you about this word bear in the Greek. It's an interesting word. This word bear, um, we translate it bear with because it, it bear is kind of a general word for us. But we typically, in our minds, think of bear with as put up with. Basically, put up with other believers. But that's not what it means. Bear with is the same word that we use for being under pressure in life. It's the idea of carrying someone. When I was in high school, I got to go to a rock concert for a group called Rush. You may have never heard of them but I, that was my favorite band when I was a kid, and I was a drummer, so it was the coolest thing ever. And down in South Florida, I was able to, to acquire third row seats. One of my friends did one of those stand in line all night things. Third row, middle section, we could feel the breeze of the band when they moved across the stage. We were so close. So we sat through about six songs and then Rush at that time played their favorite song. And as they played their favorite song, everyone in the back of this stadium packed with, I believe, about 100,000 people rushed the stage. And the chairs we were in, because they were near the front, were not bolted down. They were folding chairs. And as they came forward, it flattened the chairs. 
And one of the people I was with fell on the ground as the crowd rushed in and they were getting trampled. And I remember reaching over and my friend and I grabbing them and picking them up so that they could survive the crowd. And then we worked our way away from the stage because we wanted to live. When the Bible says bear with one another, here's what it means. When you see your friend fall down, when you see your friend struggle, when you see your friend do something to you that needs to be forgiven. By the way, if you get to know people, you will have to forgive them. Let me say that again. If you get to know anyone, there's going to be times that you have to say, well, I'm going to have to forgive that one. And that's why we lift each other up. And then it continues. Bear with each other. And then it says, forgive one another. If any one of you have a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love. So comfy. By the way, when you put on love, the other thing that happens, you put Jesus in the director's chair. He's the one that produces the movies now. You're more concerned about loving people than you are even for your own self. You take care of yourself not because you're worried about you. You take care of yourself so that you can be a blessing to others. It's like the parent on the airplane when the oxygen mask comes down. They put their mask on first, not because they're selfish, but because I have to take care of me so I can take care of you. Put on love. And then it says, which binds them all in perfect unity. Now, I want to talk about forgiveness for just a second before I talk about the next prayer. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Did you hear me? Forgiveness is not forgetting. I know people all the time say forgive and forget. The only people that can do that are missing part of their brain. If you're a normal human, now, God may take away some of the feeling of that pain, but it doesn't mean you necessarily forget what somebody did to you. Forgive and forget are two different things. Forgive also does not mean you go to that person and reestablish a relationship. There are hurtful people in the world that you have to just forgive even though you're not around them. And forgiveness is basically just allowing that person. Forgive me, I've got to, speaking of forgiveness. See, this is just like unforgiveness. It gets wrapped all around you. But when you forgive somebody, it's just releasing them. They may never make it right. For some of you, you may need to write a letter to a parent that passed away a long time ago or a teacher or somebody that hurt you. You may need to write it and burn it. Write it and tear it up and say, I no longer hold that against them. Why? Because when you walk in unforgiveness, you can't put on love. Because the unforgiveness just, just messes you up. It infiltrates all of your life. All of us know somebody who's an unforgiving person and they walk around and they look, they're the ones who say, get off my lawn to the kids, right? By the way, that person does not think they're irrational. You know that neighbor you have who's a jerk to everybody? They think that they're a nice person. But I can tell you right now, there's somebody they haven't forgiven. There's somebody who hurt them and they carry that around. So here's your next prayer. Father, fill me with your love to love others. Not just fill me with your love for me. Not just fill me with your love so I can feel so spiritual. God, I'm just walking in your light. I just love. I got your love. No, no. It's, it's he fills you with his love. Why? So that you can overflow to other people. If God fills you with his love and you never love anybody else, you'll become stagnant and stale. But if when he fills you with his love, you use that to go out of your way to bless others, it will change not only you but other people. So number one, we changed our contemplation. What are we focused on? We look for ways to carry and care for others. And number three, continue serving Christ in peace. Listen to this verse. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. I want to go back to the very beginning of the sermon. This word for rule your hearts is the word for umpire. It's the word for director. 
The umpire is the one that says, that's not good, be careful. The director is the one who says, no, 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 I don't want it this way. This is what you need to pay attention to. And when we allow the peace of Christ, when we are clothed in the peace of Christ, and we allow him to sit in the director's chair, and we allow him to rule our hearts, when our minds, and this will happen to all of us, when our minds start to run away in a worldly way, we, we, we begin to pursue unforgiveness. We begin to pursue shame. We begin to pursue hurtful things. Maybe we begin to pursue entertainment or we pursue something that maybe makes us feel better. Nothing wrong with any of those things in themselves, but when we allow the peace of Christ in our hearts, the movie's different. Suddenly, we're not only concerned about ourselves and taking care of ourselves, we're concerned about our neighbor. Why? Because Jesus gave two commands, love God and love your neighbor. Those are the things that happen when he directs. And then it continues. In your heart, since members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful. By the way, if you're struggling with making Jesus on the throne today and you're directing a movie that's negative, Thanksgiving will pull you out of that movie. Thanksgiving will say, cut. Let's try that again, and we'll refocus your mind on what God wants you to think about. And then he says, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly. Where do we find the message of Christ? In Scripture. As you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms and hymns and songs from the Spirit. So there's not just one kind of music. In heaven, there's not going to just be hymns, I'm sorry to tell you. And in heaven, there's not just going to be praise choruses, I hate to tell you. There's going to be all kind of music. And guess what? You'll even like country music if you don't. It's hard to believe for some of us. It's a work of the Spirit. And then it says, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We're back to being grateful. Are you grateful? And whatever you do, whether word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, this next section almost seems unrelated, but I want you to think of it in context of putting on love and letting God direct your life. And then it says this. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as is fitting to the Lord. By the way, that word does not mean be abused by your husband. Submit means that you honor him. Submit means that you don't go out in public and put him down and tell other people how dumb he is. Although, us guys, we know sometimes we can be dumb. And then it continues. Husbands, love your wife and do not be harsh with them. And as a guy, I will tell you, one of the biggest difficulties that guys have sometimes is they say more in anger than they do in love. And anger is like gasoline on roses. You can spend years raising roses, and one touch of gasoline will ruin them all. So be careful about being harsh. And then it continues. Children, obey your parents in everything. So you want to get your kids and just gather them around? I'll read it again. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. By the way, as adults, you still honor your parents. You just don't have to obey them anymore, just so you know. Fathers, do not embitter your children or they'll become discouraged. Slaves, obey your earthly masters and everything. Now, this is not encouraging slavery, but it's saying if that's the position you're in, and by the way, some of the bosses you work for are really close to that, but if that's the position you're in, what are you supposed to do? Do it when their eye is on you and to curry their but with sincerity of heart and reverence for the Lord. And then I love this. If you want to memorize any verse in this chapter that's really practical, here it is. Whatever you do, Work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not human masters, since you know that you'll receive an inheritance. You see how that's turning back to heaven? You'll receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It's the Lord Christ you're serving. Anyone who does wrong will be repaid for their wrongs. There's no favoritism. I want you to imagine what it was like to be around Jesus when there was a storm in the boat. Do you really think Jesus was going, hey, worry, that's so good for you. Yeah, try that. How about worry and fear and, hey, let's look at the news. That'll help you. Why don't you watch that hurricane forecast again? No. You know what it was like to be with Jesus in the boat? My peace I give to you. Not like the world has. It's very different. Let me be in charge. Quit directing the movie of fear and instead know that I can calm any storm. 
Our last prayer is this. Father, help me to recognize that I'm serving you. God, any time that I get in the director's chair and I start to direct the movie of my life, I can't believe this happened. I can't believe I did that. I can't believe that person did that. Help me to put you back on the chair and say, okay, God, you direct me. And when he does, he wraps us in his love. He wraps us in thanksgiving and gratitude and forgiveness. So the question for us is, is the peace of Christ ruling our heart? Are we wearing that garment of love from Christ that brings peace and fulfillment? Or are we pursuing everything the world offers seeking peace when he says, just trust in me? If you're watching today, I want to encourage you right where you're at to trust him. We have some great verses that are in the notes. And it says, Father, I often allow my fears and worries to dominate my mind. Help me to focus on your kingdom and doing your will today. Lord, give me wisdom to know how to serve others and to love others with your love. Help me to serve others without looking for approval from them. Today, I pray that I could take off my old ways of doing things. And put on the power of your spirit to do your will. I trust you in Jesus' name. Amen.